family. There is so much wonderful and important in this word. Since ancient times, family values have been considered significant in a person's life. Family is a living organism. Various changes constantly occur within its separations, divorces, quarrels, reunions, peace and harmony. All of this inevitably changes and combines. It is rare to find a completely stable family relationship living in complete harmony with each other. And this story was no exception. There will always be something that makes people look at their relationships in a new light. Stanley was 35 years old. Full of self-confidence, courage, optimism and desire, he was a desperate alpha male. He recently had a family. However, he divorced his wife, with whom he had been married for about 15 years. They had a daughter, Nicole, who was now 10 years old. Naturally, as in many families, it was decided that after the divorce the girl would stay with her mother. Moreover, Stanley himself did not mind, as his period of revelry, fun and reckless behaviour was beginning. So it turns out that during the midlife crisis, some men root themselves in the family, becoming more caring, warm and domestic, leaving behind all things youthful and worldly while others begin to allow themselves what they would not have allowed before, so to speak, letting loose completely, cheating, drinking, going to clubs, having fun, and spending as little time at home as possible, preferring the noisy company of friends. So, Stanley belonged to the second type of people. He had long pondered over what he had missed in his youth, and tried to make up for lost time. Thus began his adventures, which led to divorce, family discord, the impact on the child's psyche, and his own hidden sorrow. In the evenings he sat with a cup of coffee, reminiscing about how things used to be. Stanley, a twenty-year-old student at the university studying law, deeply respected morality and dreamed of a prestigious job and a strong family. And there was Sophie, romantic and energetic, cheerful and witty, dreaming of becoming a florist but studying to be a biology teacher. And these two young hearts met, bumping into each other with textbooks in hand not far from the university in a classic scenario. They met, exchanged phone numbers, and slowly fell in love with each other. And before you knew it, they were sitting together at a movie theatre, then romantically stretching and kissing in the back row, against the backdrop of the melodrama they watched. It was all amazing and magical. Youth, the exploration of adult life, education, dreams it's all delightful, but at the same time, only accessible to those who fit within the bounds of that age. And where would we be without fervent and passionate declarations of love for each other? In this, the young certainly excelled in their youth. If someone knew the songs he sang to her, the poems he read, the compliments he made, and the gifts he gave, they would never have thought that this enamoured couple would eventually part ways, forgetting past promises and leaving behind only negativity. Indeed. No one could have thought of the future discord. Stanley and Sophie had a modest wedding among their closest friends and family, followed by a joyful young life together. They welcomed a daughter, whom they named Nicole. This brought them even closer, so much so that anyone who knew them could attest to their cosmic understanding and depth of love. They were considered the epitome of a perfect family. That is until Stanley suddenly yearned for freedom. Of course it happens to many people. After making a significant choice, they later regret it and want to change it. This happened to Stanley. Suddenly, he felt a strong desire to rid himself of all the family responsibilities and live for his own pleasure. Stanley, once again returning late from work, began to behave loudly out of frustration, carelessly almost ripping off his jacket. Darling, are you home? came Sophie's gentle and timid voice as she worriedly tried to understand what had been amiss lately. Me? Of course I'm home. Don't you see? I'm always home. Work home. Work home and there's nothing else in my personal life. Always the same routine. Work and then back to this cramped place. I'm tired of it, don't you understand? Where's all that we had between us before? Where's the romance, the passion, the hours spent together? Exactly. Nowhere vanished just like my desire to come home every day. And these debts always there. How can't you see that I'm tired? Where do these debts come from? 
For example, I work and work, earn and earn. But where does it all go? Why does it all go? Why does the landlady keep complaining that we supposedly don't pay for the apartment? Why is everything like this? Where's the money? What are you doing with it? From his state, it was evident that he had been drinking after work. Whenever he was tipsy, he became more talkative, engaging in topics that previously didn't concern him. Well, perhaps this behavior is common among many people when they're tipsy. The tongue loosens and words flow easier. Stanley, don't talk nonsense. Do you think I don't feel sorry for you? Do you think I don't understand how hard it is? I do understand and I sympathize with you. We all get tired, understand that, and it's completely normal. Me and our daughter always support you, and you know that. It's just that we're not having the best of times right now. Our money goes towards food and our child, and the rent debt has been hanging over us for a while now, so it urgently needs to be paid off. You know that if we're kicked out, to we'll have nowhere to go. We love you, and we know you can handle this. I can handle it? No, no, that's not it. I'm tired. I'm just tired and can't do this anymore. And between us, I got fired today, so that's it. I'm living the free life in every sense. You know I love our daughter, but you also understand that there's nothing left between us. We're only held together by our daughter. I've been thinking more and more. Maybe we shouldn't have met 15 years ago. Maybe if we had met a couple of years later, things would be completely different now. We would have had our fun, experienced our youth in all its glory, and then started living happily together with mutual consent. Don't argue with me and say it's not true. It is true, and you know it. I see you, sometimes not averse to discussing with your young student friends. I know, don't deny it. So forgive me, there's only one way out and you know it. Stanley began quickly gathering his belongings, while Sophie could do nothing but watch this sad spectacle. By the way, their daughter Nicole was already asleep at this time. Perhaps it played into both their hands. What use would they have for hot tears and questions from their child in this difficult moment for both of them? Questions they sadly couldn't answer. Meanwhile, Stanley managed to get himself together and stood in the doorway, looking at his crying wife. Well, what's wrong, Sophie? You know this is for the best. Better for both of us. Don't tell me it's not true. It's just words, the truth. We need a break, and you know it. But anyway, know that I'm not going to leave Nicole. She's our little flower, I love her. And she'll always be my daughter. Forgive me if I haven't lived up to your expectations. Truly forgive me. And now I need to go. Goodbye. With that, the door slammed shut, and behind it came the subdued but mournful crying of his wife. Sophie knew that perhaps this was the end. She still loved him, but she didn't know how to convince him to stay. She simply didn't have the strength herself, and she was very tired. Tired of everything household chores, work at the university, and perhaps, finally, the most burdensome factor was the scandals with her husband. She often pleaded with him, calmed him down, and tried to explain things to him, but it may have been too late already. Now everything was too late. Several months had passed since they parted ways, yet neither of the lovers had thought about ever meeting again. And so, it was a few months later. It was autumn, a cold autumn that oppressed hearts and froze feelings. It was just an ordinary October day. A moderate but cold wind was blowing. Leaves were scattered all over the place. The streets were deserted. Silence prevailed on the once lively and energetic streets, and there was solitude. Only occasionally could one encounter a couple of sad people sitting on a bench, lost in thought and looking around. Through the park on this day walked Stanley, but not alone. He had a new acquaintance. She was tall and blonde, looking particularly well-groomed, like a model. Undoubtedly, she was Stanley's new lover. As he wanted, he started to go out, have fun, and attend youth events. Over the past couple of months he hadn't been with any girls, she was already the fifth, but strangely it was a different, distinctive feeling. He felt younger and more attractive next to them, but it should be noted that she felt good next to him too. It was something more than just a date. Most likely it was love, the very new love that the man had dreamed of. 
As it turned out later, she was not only a beautiful girl who was ten years younger than him, but also a wealthy girl. When he first visited her home, he was in utter amazement. He was taken to a country mansion, surrounded on all sides by a high fence. There were two guards walking around the yard, opening and closing the gates, and perhaps the pool stood out, which was heated around the clock, and despite the cool weather, you could confidently swim in it. Undoubtedly, it was advantageous for Stanley, and advantageous also because he loved her. Such things happen in life not often. Well, they met as follows. A couple of weeks after leaving home, having already met several girls, the man once again headed to a nightclub, and coincidentally, to a bar. It was often a good place to spend time, enjoying quality and tasty cocktails. As usual, Stanley sat in his favorite spot, and, with his last money, ordered a couple of portions of whiskey and a cocktail. He somehow quickly got drunk. He was really out of it, so he couldn't stop in time and started ordering more and more without any restraint. It got to the point where the bartender, noticing the man's already weakened state, demanded payment for the cocktails he had already ordered, so he could pour him another one. Stanley just shrugged, saying he had no means to pay. It was close to getting him kicked out of the bar, and worse if the police were called. However, that beautiful blonde, named Francisca, came to his rescue. She paid for all the drinks he had consumed and asked him, Sir, where do you live? I need to take you home. You're in no state. Did something happen to make you so relaxed? In response, Stanley shrugged again and said, Me? I live nowhere. I'm homeless. I have no home and no one. He began to laugh loudly, attracting the attention of many people in the bar. Yes, indeed, it's not an easy situation. What to do? I guess I'll have to help, the girl thought, and called security to escort him to her car. She decided to take him to her home because she was worried that in this state, the handsome young man might do something foolish or get into an unpleasant situation, especially since he had attracted quite a bit of attention from the bar crowd. Besides, she liked him at first sight. Francisca had been sitting in the corner of the bar for a while, watching him drink. It was a great opportunity to make contact with him and get to know him better. It was particularly pleasing to earn his gratitude for the night's rescue. It must be admitted that the next morning he woke up remembering nothing. His surprise was compounded by the fact that he woke up not somewhere in a cheap hostel or alley, but in a real, richly furnished cottage. On the table next to the couch where he woke up, mineral water, sliced fruit, and a small note were prepared, which read as follows, Hello, Stanley. Yesterday in the bar, you drank almost to the point of unconsciousness, so I decided to help you. You said you had nowhere to live, so I don't mind you spending a couple of days with me until you recover. Probably by the time you read this note, it's already midday, so wait for me, I'll be there soon. After he finished reading this, he was filled with incredible surprise. As stated in the note, the homeowner returned by evening. In her hands, she held a bottle of wine and a bag of various snacks. The man was immensely surprised, and then, understanding what was happening, thanked once again for his newfound freedom, which he had acquired, and began to follow the events. Since then, they started spending every evening together, and, as expected, grew closer. They often strolled through parks, restaurants, and museums. Stanley, as he had hoped, led a very interesting and fulfilling life. Next to Francisca, he felt much younger, stronger, and more promising than he had been before. As they passed by a cafe, they decided to go in. It's cozy here, isn't it, darling? No kidding. I especially like these flowers on each table. You know, it evokes some natural, instinctive interest and sympathy for this place. They placed their order, but suddenly Stanley's phone started vibrating. He didn't want Francisca to overhear the conversation, so he decided to excuse himself to the bathroom. Even during their walk, he felt his phone vibrating, 
so he needed to make sure everything was okay. He didn't know who exactly was calling, but he was wary of several consecutive calls. And so he began dialing a number he hadn't known before. Continuous beeps sounded, and she, Sophie, picked up the phone. Hello, Stanley. I was starting to think I wouldn't reach you. I needed to talk to you urgently. It concerns not only me. I know you have a new and fun life now, so I don't dare to distract you from it. But what I feared before has happened. Stanley, we've been evicted from the apartment. I have no idea where we'll live. I've gathered our things and right now we're at my friend Sherry's. But you understand we can't stay with her for long, as she has her own family and children. I don't want to impose on her. If you truly love our daughter, at least think about her. I hope you haven't completely forgotten about her. By the way, she's asked about you several times, asked where you are, why you don't come home. She's starting to realize that you've left us, and I couldn't say anything. I didn't want to lie, but at the same time I felt sorry for Nicole. She's too young to know that her father wanted to have fun because he was tired of family life. I hope you've heard me and haven't ignored my cry for help. Indeed, at that moment he listened very attentively and thoughtfully to Sophie. For a moment it seemed to him that everything he had done before was wrong. It became clear to him that he loved his daughter very much. Stanley flashed the thought that he still loved Sophie, but it was very hard to believe. He couldn't believe that, loving his family, he could betray it so blatantly and criminally. How could he, loving Sophie, meet random girls and sleep with them? How could he forget about his growing daughter? What would he tell her later, in a couple of years when she would be a teenager, understanding everything and despising him? These thoughts weighed heavily on him. But one of the scariest thoughts was that, while playing and having fun, he could genuinely make a good, kind and caring girl fall in love with him. How could he treat her like that? After all, he didn't love her, although it must be admitted that things were heading towards marriage. And she introduced him to her parents, very serious people. How could he, that evening, shake not just one family, succumbing to his lust and desire? He needed to respond urgently to his wife. Sophie, darling, I hear you. I hear everything perfectly. I'll come up with something, I promise. I need time. I don't have money right now to help you, but I have an idea. Come with Nicole to the country house. I'll send you the address. Approach the house and wait. I'll meet you there. But for now, don't ask questions. I understand it's strange, but trust me, I'll meet you there. Okay. Okay, I don't know, of course, what you've planned there and how you ended up in that house, but I'll believe you. For now. Goodbye. Until tonight. At that moment, Stanley matured a quite decent plan. In the evening, the guards would change, so he would have a quiet hour to bring his family inside the house. Francisca herself would be at work until evening and at home, apart from the kitchen and bedroom, she usually didn't go anywhere. The housekeeper cleaned everywhere, except one room, Francisca's brother's room, who had long since moved to another country, but he strictly warned that no one should enter his room until his return. Everything seemed perfect, but Stanley's conscience was deeply troubled. He needed to lie, so to speak, for the greater good of helping his family. He understood that he felt no emotions for Francisca other than a fleeting passion, but he didn't want to deceive this kind, tender, trusting woman. He decided to settle his family in for the shortest possible time to find money and then move them to a proper apartment in the city. Having been away for so long, he resolved to return to the hall to Francisca. Stanley, I was starting to worry. You took quite a while. Are you okay? No, darling, everything's fine. I just got a call from an old acquaintance. That's why I was delayed. An acquaintance? Interesting. Well, I guess you'll tell me about them later. I want to know all your friends. Your friends are my friends and my friends. I'm sure they're very nice people. 
Now shall we eat. And they began to eat the food just served to them. After a while, they were already home. Fatigued from work and walks around the city, Francisca decided to take a bath and then go to bed. This played into Stanley's plan, and he was confident in his abilities. Francisca emerged from the bath, then approached the man and asked, I'm going to bed now, when will you? Will you be coming soon? Soon, I'll just finish reading this newspaper article and come. You know how keenly interested I am in legal articles. The curiosity is endless. All right, darling, don't stay up too late. Okay, dear. About two hours passed, and the man went out to meet his family. Sophie and Nicole stood not far from the fence. He went out and let them in. Daddy. Daddy. I missed you so much. Nicole, my girl. He hugged his daughter tightly and almost cried. I'm glad you didn't forget about your daughter, Sophie said with obvious sadness. Forgive me, my dears. I'll try to fix everything quickly. I'll take you to your room now. Try not to make noise and try not to reveal yourselves. You can go out from ten in the morning until five in the evening, as the housekeeper usually leaves at nine. There's food and everything you need. We just need to hold out for a week. Then I'll find the money, and you'll rent a proper apartment in the city and move out of here. I won't even ask whose house this is, or if the owners would mind, but I'll tell you one thing thank you. After that, he gently led them inside. The house was quiet, dark, and warm. In a moment, they were in the room. It was spacious with colorful and vibrant posters on the walls. In the corner of the room was a laptop, opposite it a sofa and several armchairs, as well as a wardrobe. The mother and daughter quickly settled in. Thank you, Stanley, Sophie said. Thank you, Daddy, Nicole said tenderly. You're welcome, my dears. Just endure a little bit while I figure something out. He left. It was quiet again. The next couple of minutes he went back into the bedroom and lay down next to Francisca. She was fast asleep, or at least that's how it seemed to him. The next morning he woke up much later than Francisca. She was in the kitchen preparing breakfast. He approached her and said, Good morning, darling. How did you sleep? Good morning. I slept well. The dream was so interesting, vivid. What dream? You rarely have dreams. Well, when I went to bed, you were sleeping very soundly. It's not like you were having vivid dreams at that time. Well, you know, we all have different moments and secrets. For instance, I can sleep quietly and still, watching vivid dreams. Lovely ability, said Stanley with concern, beginning to suspect that Francisca might have noticed something yesterday. Have breakfast or it will get cold. They were silent for a couple of minutes. Then Stanley asked, darling, I wanted to ask, do you know if your firm needs good lawyers? Or maybe you have acquaintances who serve in the authorities and need a good employee. I just can't stay at home anymore. I can't take it. I need to be busy. You won't always be able to support me. You're absolutely right, dear, she smiled. The firm indeed needs qualified and competent specialists. Today you can come with me and we'll arrange something for you there. And so it happened. That same day they went to the firm run by Francisca. There they got him a job. Just a couple of hours later he returned home. Sophie and Nicole were still in the room. He brought them food and showed them around the house. By five o'clock, everyone was in their rooms. Francisca returned. They had dinner with Stanley and went to bed. This went on for about a week. It was a very tense time for everyone. One day everything coincided so that Francisca returned home earlier than usual. At that moment, Sophie and Nicole were in the living room. Stanley was there too, so he didn't notice the hostess returning. She approached them from behind, 
deciding to surprise them unexpectedly. What happened next surprised everyone. Hello, family, Francisca exclaimed loudly. It seems like everyone, absolutely everyone, is here. Well, what delicious things did you prepare? Everyone stood in shock. No one expected this, and no one knew what would happen next. Sophie and Stanley even had thoughts that Francisca might call the police and have them taken to the station, but no one expected such a turn of events. I've known you were here for a while, she said respectfully and quickly. I suspected something was wrong back at the bar, and then I decided to find out more about you. The private detective didn't help, but I figured everything out myself. Then on the night you came, I saw it through the window too. And there's no denying the security cameras. They may not be noticeable, but they exist. Francisca, but how? Please forgive us. If you decide to call the police, know that they are not guilty. I take full responsibility for this. It was my idea to invite them here temporarily. I'm not going to call anyone. Didn't you understand that I didn't mind? I found out that you had nowhere to stay. Don't worry about that. I was waiting for the right moment to let you know that I knew everything. Well, now that everything's out in the open, you don't have to hide. You see, I felt sorry for you, really. But now let me tell you this. I won't file any reports, and I won't tell anyone. Of course, I was hurt very much when I found out about your lifestyle, Stanley. Both Sophie and I suffered from this, but now I see that you love her more. I don't blame anyone. And now, to make things easier, I've rented you an apartment in the city. I'll call a taxi now, too. Stanley, you have a job now, a good one, and I won't stand in your way. Well, excuse me now, I'm tired and I'm going to bed. You can tell me tomorrow at work how you got there, and she left for the bedroom. At that moment, everyone was surprised. Sophie said, See, Stanley, strangers treat us like humans, and you didn't appreciate either the family or us. Forgive me, he said softly. I understand everything now. I'll try to make it right if you forgive me, of course. Of course I'll forgive you. After all, I love you very much. And I love you, said Nicole. Within an hour, they packed all their things, got into a taxi, and went to the new apartment to start a new life, leaving all the bad things from their old life behind. If you enjoyed the story, please subscribe to my channel and support me with a thumbs up button. Wishing you all the best.